Hi creative friends, my name is Ashley the Thrifty Chica. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be creating something using an item from Target's Dollar Spot and I thought this would be a really fun and expensive way to customize something for our kitchen decor or maybe as a gift or even to sell. If you guys haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos and the project will be linked below so you can go directly to it. Let's talk about what supplies you'll need for this project. I'm going to be using this Target pitcher and this was $5 at Target. It's a really great size and I think it's a, a great find. It's in the Target dollar spot. I'm also using a microfiber rag, Cricut transfer tape, Cricut premium vinyl. This is in the color mint. I'm using a pair of scissors, a weeding tool, and a scraper tool. And we're going to go ahead and get this started. So let's cut our um, premium vinyl in the color mint. So our first step is just making sure that we cut a piece of the decal to the right size that we need. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut one and apply it to the mat. We're gonna apply our vinyl to the mat and we're using premium vinyl. So it has a grid on the back. This helps you to line it up and also to cut it down if needed and we're gonna line it up along the top of the mat here. I like to apply it in one direction facing down and just press it so that way there's no major air bubbles. Now we're ready to load it into our machine. We're using the standard fine point blade and now we can get started. Okay, now it's ready to unload. To unload our mat, we're going to flip this over and hold on to our project and just roll it back. I'm gonna cut down our decal into the size that we need here. And this is going to be applied in two separate parts. We're gonna be applying the word sweet and then we'll be applying the word tea separately. This is gonna be great since we're working on a 3D surface, you wanna make sure that you're working with um, as small of pieces as you can. So if you're trying to apply a huge decal at the same time, it's a lot more difficult. This makes it a little bit easier. We're gonna go ahead and weed our project. Weeding just refers to removing the excess material from the project. So I'm gonna use my weeding tool and start in the corner. I'm just gonna kind of pierce it to lift it up and that helps to get it started. And if you're having problems with your um, vinyl getting, getting off of the backing easily, something you can do is you can up the pressure on the vinyl or you can also increase the number of passes that it takes to cut. So you can increase it so instead of it just cutting it one time, it's cutting it multiple times. And here's a tip that I use whenever I'm working with permanent vinyl. I like to cut away the excess pieces as I'm working on it. This makes it a lot easier for me to keep track of which section I'm working on. And because this is so sticky, it tends to try to stick to itself as you're working with it. So cutting away those excess pieces just ensures that you're not sticking all of this. See, look how hugely sticky that is. It's stuck to the back. So we don't want this to stick to our project, which is why I go back in and I cut away that as I'm working. So right there. Once you get a significant amount, it gets more and more difficult to um, work with weeding a project without having it stick back there. And you'll see sections where it's just a lot easier for you to weed and cut. It'll just make sense. That's a good stopping point. You can also use your tool to hold down your uh, decal as you're working and it makes a big difference if you're having problems um, with your decal shifting around. You can place your tool right over it and then lift with your other hand on the um, vinyl here. Okay. 
If you're trying to get something from a section, you can always place your finger underneath it and kind of roll your decal. And then that lifts it up just slightly enough where you can get in there with your tools and it makes it a lot easier for you to get in there to remove the pieces that you need to remove. And I'm going in and just removing the smaller pieces just by lifting it up by rolling my finger underneath it and then using that to lift that up. So we have that section done and now we can work on the next. Now we're going to break out our transfer tape and we're going to cut a piece to fit on this one and then we'll apply our transfer tape. So whenever you're working with transfer tape, just remember that it's basically a clear sticky sheet on top of a paper backing. So we're just gonna remove the sticky sheet portion of it and from the backing slowly we can um, apply the, st the sticky sheet to our decal here. And transfer tape works best when you work on small sections at a time. So I like to hold it in both hands and make kind of a V shape. We're gonna place this down in the center of our decal and just roll it out. And the whole goal for this is to make sure that this decal adheres to the top sheet and that any bubbles are placed outwards away from underneath the decal. We're going to break out our scraper tool and just start in the middle and our goal is just to push those air bubbles out. Don't be afraid to spend a little bit of extra time when you're working on decals. It really makes a difference and I really like to go at this multiple directions just in case I miss something going the other direction. I'll flip it over. Okay, we're gonna keep it sticky side up here, move that out of the way and repeat the process on the other decal. So now that we have our decals ready to go, make sure you cleaned your pitcher with a lint-free cloth or something like an alcohol wipe just to make sure that it's ready to go. We're gonna also think about our decal and how this is going to be applied. Since this is a pretty large decal, what will help with this is to cut some little strips in so that way it can bend a little bit easier around our project. So I'm splitting it so it's essentially in thirds and it'll just make it a lot easier for us to apply it. So I'm going to place a couple slots in between. And also I'm going to place a slot here so it can move around. So what we're going to do is you can place it pretty much anywhere along where you think it's going to look the best. But what I recommend is just to kind of eyeball it and figure out where, um, which side you prefer. I tend to place my pictures in this way, so I think I'm going to leave it with the handle facing that way. You could apply it um, having it on the table and applying it that way, or you can hold it and then apply it that way. Whichever is the easiest for you to balance and juggle. It is a larger project, so... Um, you know, whichever it feels the most comfortable for you. So I'm going to go ahead and start by applying this in the center. So I'm just going to place this down and apply it right in that center point and just kind of press that section down. 
And I'm keeping this other section kind of out of the way so that way it doesn't interfere while I'm trying to place this next portion. And as you can see, I'm just kind of slowly rolling this along as we're going. And I'm placing this section down and that way I can place this part around it. So those pieces would um, interfere or bubble up if I let it go the direction that it wanted to. This is one reason that we cut little strips is because everything likes to curve its own way around it. So you wanna be able to adjust it as needed. Okay, so now we've gotten this section kind of applied and then all the way down here, we're gonna go ahead and start working on applying the next sections. These haven't been really placed down, so I'm still able to move them around. So we have that middle section and I'm gonna press this down and just start rolling this with my fingers across. And then I have a slit there, so I can go ahead and press this down. And then I can follow this along. Don't worry if you have little bubbles in between where your design is. The whole point is just to make sure that the where the decal is itself is the part that um, is lined up where it needs to be. It doesn't really matter if the tape in the middle um, gets in the way. This other piece we can't apply until we have this top section done because it's kind of fits in snugly there and this transfer tape would get in the way. So we're gonna go ahead and break out our um, rag so that we can apply this. Okay. So I have my rag and our goal here is to make sure that any air bubbles escape outwards. We don't want them trapped underneath where our decal is. So I'm just gonna start pressing this down. You can also kind of hold it in your hand and work on it that direction. And I'm just applying firm pressure across the decal in small sections. When you feel pretty confident that it's applied well, we can take a corner of the section here and just start peeling this down. And remember, if you are noticing that it's not adhered completely, you can always place the transfer tape back down and work on it some more. This is gonna come off in pieces because we cut little slits in the transfer tape. It's pretty standard that it just kind of peels off in small sections. Okay, so you can always double check, take a look at your decal, look for any flaws or any spots where there might be little air bubbles, and then go back over it and just press down again. And to make sure that you are removing those, kind of press them out a little bit. You don't wanna place a huge amount of force, but you do wanna just kind of lightly press it out towards the sides, and that way everything stays applied and doesn't slide around on your project here. So we have that section on. Now we're ready to apply the next section. So we have our smaller decal here. This one should be a lot easier to apply since we can kind of nestle this in to the other section. So we're just gonna place this here. And I'm going to press down on the E here, which is that center portion, and then just kind of roll this The nice thing is if you haven't pressed it down, it's usually okay for you to still lift it. I'm just pressing this down and out, and then I'm gonna continue moving towards the left section here. And if you may, may have noticed, I worked from here around and up. The reason for this is if I had just gone straight across here, if there had been any rippling or bubbling there, that could have happened if this wasn't placed correctly. So it's. It's something that really helps is if you kind of follow along with the curve first of the project that you're working on and it just helps to eliminate any problems with it um, bubbling up. Okay, 
when you're happy with that placement, we're gonna go ahead and take our transfer tape and remove it from here. And there we go. So how do you guys think this project turned out? Do you think this is something that you will use throughout the year or maybe just for a fun summer party? I can't wait to do some fun things for the summer and get out of the heat as well. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I will see you later.